Sugar Bowl New Year's Eve Parade, our third annual. Such a privilege to be bringing you this live on your TV screens today. And the crowd, phenomenal. I mean, if you have a chance to get out here, you really should. The parade is up, officially starting right now as we speak. Yeah, right behind us, it is the Clemson University Tiger Marching Band, the band that shakes the Southland. And they are here, and they're going to play for us shortly. We've got the Alabama Crimson Tide Million Dollar Band coming up next. And then numerous bands from around the country that are participating in this parade today as well. Yeah, and all the fans and their supporters and uh, schoolmates and families and friends all out here enjoying this incredible day along with the parade and pomp and circumstance out here right now. So let's listen in now to the Clemson University Marching Band. Clemson University Tiger Marching Band, the band that shakes the <laughs> Southland, played in the 2016 National Championship game in Phoenix, 350 members strong. Yeah, they also uh, performed in the Orange, Citrus, Hall of Fame, Peach, and Gator Bowls. All right, let's listen in. Scott, look at it. Did you see that cute little girl dancing? Yep. <laughs> there are no, no inhibitions in the French Quarter on New Year's Eve. <laughs> that even goes down to the seven, eight-year-old crowd. I love it because not you afraid can, to dance. Yeah, I love it because the whole family's out here. I mean, you have two-year-olds, three-year-olds, an adorable seven-year-old out here just dancing away. 
uh, right in the middle of the street as the parade is going by. So I'm loving this. She's Some people great. may uh, say the French Quarter isn't family friendly. Don't tell that to the Clemson, Alabama fans today who are here at Fan Fest and out at the parade because there are a ton of children mixed in with the adults in there. Clemson orange and Alabama crimson. A sea of orange. I think I saw a lot more orange today than There does seem you, to be right? <laughs> more orange than crimson out here today. Uh, it appears That's that. That's just our unscientific eyes, though. I don't know. We could be wrong. But just from eyeballing what I, right, it, right. I see more orange. But right. I think that's um, affected a little bit by the Clemson band being right in front of us, too, because that's a lot of orange. So we'll evaluate again when the Alabama band gets here in a couple of minutes. But, man, this crowd, we can't say enough about the turnout today. This is the third year we've done this, and this crowd is fantastic, lining both sides of the street very deep. You do have a good perspective because you were out here last year and the year before, and you've noticed this crowd is a little more ecstatic, lively, a, a bigger crowd, you've noticed. You and Mark, both of you guys. A few years right? ago, Ole Miss brought a big contingent. Auburn had a big contingent uh, last year, and uh, this year I'll just go with split for right now <laughs> between Clemson and Alabama in terms of crowd size. Well, I love this crowd because not only are they having a great time, they're dancing, all smiles across the board, a sea of orange and crimson today, but I think they're well prepared. I see people in rain gear. They brought their rain boots, socks, hats, gloves, covering their ears and hands and feet and, and head so they're they're well prepared and that's what i uh, appreciate about this crowd because they know heads, how to have a good time in this cold speaking of heads there's a nick saban head uh -oh. cut out in front of us here of course lsu fans don't like to acknowledge nick saban anymore that's right but like he <laughs> he rules the roost in alabama nick is a po nick saban's a popular guy i was telling i read that usa today article about how there were 400 write-ins during the recent senate election for nick Saban. Yeah, Ronald Reagan even got some votes <laughs> in that in he that sure election. Did. He did. He did. But Nick Saban got it handed him. He's very popular, well loved, beloved by by many. Of course, uh, Alabama's got some local flavor as well with uh, Mark Ingram, who right. won the Heisman Trophy and played for the Alabama Crimson Tide, having a heck of a season with the Saints. And C.J. Spiller, who played with the Saints, starred at Clemson a few years ago, and he was around here at the Fan Fest signing autographs earlier today. Sugar Bowl executive committee rolling in now as you can see and I love the throws that's the best part about parades here in the French Quarter in New Orleans is the throws I mean once you've been on like last time remember we were on the parade tracker and you you know throw little WDSU cups and beads and I love that experience it's really great it's like nothing I've ever done in my life really I love that yeah the, uh, cheerleaders. the fans here I know I know a lot of people uh, who rode in this parade last year, and they said some of the tourists weren't exactly sure what to do. A lot of them had their hands in their pockets, uh -huh. weren't sure right. exactly what was oh. going to be coming out of them, and they, uh, they learned quickly when beads started flying their way. They learned quickly this is the only way to do a parade, Scott. Just, oh, wait. I would, and this is where arm strength is tested. Right here. This is where arm strength is tested Throw by one the to riders. Me and Scott Walker. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Romig, remembers, <laughs> Mark Romig remembers Mark uh, remembers last year we had some some coffee thrown at us bags of coffee from from other place. Yeah, we sure can. Mark. I can use Brew that. some hot coffee right now. Nice cup of hot coffee. They're throwing heavy. They're throwing heavy. Those are some teachers up here uh -huh. from uh, Teach for America, the extra yard for teachers. You know, Allstate Sugar Bowl, in fact, I spoke with the uh, communications director, and he told me that the Allstate Sugar Bowl sponsors Teach for America as yes. well. Uh, they sponsor, they give back to the community in many ways, and you'll see one of my stories coming up later on today as you watch us today, folks. But uh, Teach for America is one of the organizations. Yeah, and Allstate, they're so good to our community. Helping they're really students, been great. especially, yes. helping, helping young students. And let's not forget, community. too, that uh, these floats that you see in this parade are floats that you probably recognize from That's other right. parades, such that, as that one is uh, Orpheus, uh, Smoky Mary, Smoky yeah. Mary, one of the popular ones. So you'll see some familiar uh, sights float-wise. Current as you watch Studios, the they do, uh, Barry Kern and his group, they do a wonderful job with Mardi Gras. They really do. I mean, they run the thing. <laughs> they do a wonderful job. They uh, have, I mean, they've done it for so many years now. And they've produced so many amazing floats for so many amazing parades. And the work that goes into these floats 
So the executive committee, how long do they plan for this? This is a year-round year 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 uh, year volunteer long, service right? they do. And it's not only the football game. Uh, there are 50 other events throughout the year that we do. Uh, so it's that's another large part of the impact. And all the other festivities and activities that go along with the Sugar Bowl game. You've got right. this parade here. You've got the game tomorrow. You've got the Fan Fest. You've got all the other activities, right? You're right. You've got the spouse the program. Each of the teams bring a number of uh, spouses and uh, children. And they make sure that they're taken care of and, and fed well and they see the sights of New Orleans and that's uh, another important way for us to show off the city because they all leave with great stories and that means they're spreading the great uh, news about New Orleans around the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Alabama Crimson Tide Million Dollar Band is up next. Yeah, they'll be here. Them, they'll be here shortly. So <laughs> stand by for that because that is when they call it the Million Dollar Band. It is serious business. This band is one of the best, not only in Alabama, not only in the South, but in the nation. I lived in Alabama for seven years, and Alabama and Auburn have quite the rivalry, as you know, Sella. But Your allegiance to but this a band, team. There are very few that compare to this band. Very few. I know. Few. You lived in Alabama, too. Uh, so I, I've heard you talk about Alabama many times before. <laughs> what is that? No, that's quite all right. It's We've got all these love. We've got, we got some love in the crowd. <laughs> We're being offered moonshine by Alabama fans. That's, that's where we are in our day right now, being offered moonshine. Thank you. But I'll pass for right now, but see me at about 5 o'clock. My goodness. See, I told you, the crowd's lively. I mean, they're just having a great time, and it's so nice to see a phenomenal crowd out here ha having fun and just enjoying the state. But you know, all this body heat keeps us warm, too, oh, yeah. so I'm enjoying that. appreciating that. The Million Dollar Band has been around for 104 years. And they're 400 members strong. Band director is Dr. Kenneth Ozello. Stand by, and as soon as they start playing, we're going to let you listen in on this Million Dollar Band. <laughs> from the University of Alabama, 400 strong, founded in 1912, one of the best bands that you'll find in the United States. <laughs> They're good, and they, they live up to the million dollar band No name. favoritism here from Scott Walker. <laughs> Look, I'm, a, I'm an equal opportunity praiser. <laughs> praiser. I've heard you before, Scott. They were great, though. No, I agree with you. They, they were great. They were phenomenal. And look at this crowd. And there's more Amazing. of them coming by as well. It's a big band. Like I said, 400 plus, about 408 members this year. And the band director is Dr. Kenneth Ozello. 
and from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Braving the cold here today. In its first year, the band had 14 members back in 1912. Now 400 plus in 2017. Man, that's a big band. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big band. It's amazing, the Fan Fest area here at Jack's Brewery. It was so crowded earlier today for the pep rally and all these events going on. And as soon as the parade started, they moseyed on over uh, to Decatur Street and they packed the streets here. And it's phenomenal to see this. And Having as fate would have it, this is the Allstate Sugar Bowl and the Allstate float <laughs> is coming up right next here for us here at the uh, third annual Allstate Sugar Bowl Parade. And every year at this time, we talk to a representative from Allstate. And we're going to do that again right now. <laughs> Pam Hollander is joining us live from Allstate. Thank you so much for Thanks so much for being having me here. here. This is so exciting. You're having a good time. I'm always having a good time when I'm here, yes. Talk a little bit about Allstate and sponsoring this Sugar Bowl and, you know, all these events here. This oh, is not gosh. only great for um, the city and the community, but all these tourists and all these families who are out here. Oh, to it's enjoy fantastic. The day. So Allstate's been such a proud sponsor of the Allstate Sugar Bowl. It's been 12 years. 12 years. It's just Time fantastic. Time flies you're having fun, right? <laughs> no doubt about it. And each year we just really try to up our game. And um, again, three years ago we partnered to go ahead and start doing the parade with you all, and it's been just tremendous. And this city knows how to put on a parade, let me tell you. <laughs> Um, and riding the Allstate float, um, we've got amazing members of the Allstate AFC A Good Works team. And these are college football players from all over the country who are known for giving back to their community. In what ways? Can you describe a oh, little gosh. bit about how? It, it, it'll range from doing mission trips around the world to um, helping kids learn how to read to donating bone marrow. I mean, it depends. It, it's just phenomenal the types of things that these student athletes are doing, not only on the field with good grades, et cetera, but really just giving back in their community. Yeah, and talk about the importance of that. Again, I am going to do a story later on about one of the sponsorships. Um, Allstate Sugar Bowl also sponsors the high school yeah. football state yes. championship games, and so they have a partnership. You have a partnership with we the do. Louisiana High School um, Athletic Association. Yes. But about giving back to the youth and not only emphasizing the importance of sports, but academia as well. Oh, 100%. And, and you know, social it's, service and civic And service, social right? service and civic stuff, absolutely. And I think when you talk to some of these kids out there today, it really is about um, making sure that they're making an impact on the world, right? And it's it's really core to what Allstate is known for. It is about the good hands giving back. I don't, you know, I have to really talk about that. And in fact, we were out this morning at a, at a community um, uh, recreational center called Apex, and we were doing an amazing community service project, and we had the AFC Good Works team join us. We had Tim Tebow join us this morning, and we had members of the Imagine Here? Dragons. Imagine, I love Imagine Dragons, well, which good. they will be performing uh, later to say, tonight. Stay around tonight. And Tim Tebow, I'm a fan of Tim Tebow also. So we were with them this morning, and they were all doing amazing work. They were gardening, they were building playgrounds, they were fixing up a basketball court. It was tremendous. What about this matchup? Let's talk about the game oh. real quickly before we let you go. Alabama, Clemson, rematch of last year's Could national championship game. Could you not game. ask for a better, better Fantastic. matchup? <laughs> it's like? going to be amazing. Can you, put, can you take a side? I can't. You know what I want? I can't take a you side. You want a great game. I just want a lot Overtime. of. I want a lot of field goals into the good hands field goal nets. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, Fair thank, enough. Thank you for joining us. Thank we appreciate you so it. much for having me. And I appreciate it. For 12 years of all states affiliation with the Sugar Bowl. Let's toss things out. Uh, let's see where Chief Meteorologist Margaret Orr, she's, I think, having a grand old time. I don't see her, but I know she's out there. Margaret, how's it going where you are? Hey. Okay, so I am up on top of a pot so that I can get a good view. I can see the bands, and I'm not the only person on top of a pot. There are other people on top of pots. It's a great. Wait, can you are out here? Mostly, I have seen Clemson fans. I can't. All right, 
we lost to Margaret Orr, but we promise we'll get her back as soon as we can. She is in the thick of it all. She's down with the people, in the crowd, mixing it up on New Year's Eve with Clemson and Alabama fans. If you're home watching by any chance, I mean, there's always a chance, right? And you have a friend or a family out here, tell them to go say hi to Margaret Orr. We'll put you on TV. She loves kids. If you have an adorable, you know, kiddo, a little one dressed up, uh, you know, in your Clemson color or Alabama colors, and go find Margaret Orr. She's out there in the crowd she's, having a good time. On a pod. She says she's on a pod. She's so. conspicuous, too. She's, <laughs> she's got a camera following her around in front of Jack's Brewery. And everyone recognizes uh, Margaret Orr, so go say hello. Hey, swing by where we are. We're at uh, Jack's Brewery here, um, the Fan Fest area. You know, it was so much. We had a little, um, there's a little, you know, there's all kinds of, like, free T-shirts. They're handing out, you know, free items, but there's also games and fun things for the whole family. Kick field goals. I know. Well, that's right. I've, I've been wanting Scott Walker to go and <laughs> kick a ball, kick a football. Ball. I have too many layers on to extend my leg like that. I wanted to try it, but the line was too long, so maybe after all of the parade is over, I'm going to head over and, you know, it's been my dream. I want to <laughs> kick. I want to kick a football. As long see what as the that bar's not like. set that high, then uh, I think you can try that right after this. If you're in, if you're coming down here after the parade, it doesn't end when the parade ends in, in a little bit. Um, this continues through the night. Like we mentioned earlier, the Imagine Dragons are here tonight. My kids love Imagine Dragons. Me too. Apparently, Sella's a fan as well. I'm a big fan. Um, big entertainment here for New Year's Eve. Their national crews that'll be out here ringing in the new year on national television. And that Wait, is going to be something I, I can exciting. tell you exactly what time um, they're going to perform because I wrote it down. Right? I'll let you know because if you're a fan of Imagine Dragons like me, uh, Imagine Dragons are performing 10. at 10 p.m. tonight. 8.15 is Walk the Moon and 6.30 is Kermit Ruffins, and we all love Kermit Ruffins. You're so, so organized. Awesome performance tonight, so head on out here. All you have to do is just bundle up a little bit, and you'll be good. But because it's such a big crowd, you'll be fine, because body heat. And that Wind chill of about helps. 32 right now, Yikes. and it's going to get colder <laughs> as the night goes on. This is the Normal West High School Marching Band from Normal, Illinois, 103 members strong. And they are bringing it today. Here we go.
The Normal West High School Marching Band playing a close walk with thee. All right, and there, um, here's an interesting fact about them. Placed in top three of state marching band championships, 10 years running. And guess what? They also performed in four NFL stadiums, so they're, do, they're really good. Um, national exposure performed in the past as well on a national stage. But hey, no place like New Orleans. I think this is the best stage to perform. You know what else is really good? These floats. Segway to Barry Kern <laughs> with Kern <laughs> Studios. Once again, coordinating this parade and many others throughout the Mardi Gras season. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. Appreciate Absolutely. you being here. Wear uh, your gloves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is the third <laughs> annual parade. Um, <laughs> bigger and better this year, it seems. Seems like the best crowd we've seen in the past three years. Yeah, and, and you know, it's, well, you know, these things grow. And once people start, even so you start seeing the locals coming out for it as well, yeah. which is fun. Besides every, everybody from out of town enjoying it. We got some great sponsors again. And it's, yeah, it has grown. We have more floats and uh, more bands than ever. Some local flavor, literally. French Market Coffee here. About 200 employees in this area. 600 employees nationwide. Big supporter of the United Way as well, with a company double matches all employee contributions. Oh, second I got one. Bank. Right. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I'm a little and too excited because, right now. because they're yeah, throwing things to me. Yeah, no, they can, <laughs> there we go. I want it's, the coffee. Great, great coffee, and they have their new cold brew coffee is what they're... I, that's what I want. Is. Can they it's throw so a cold cool. brew? Just yeah, kidding. it's a new cold brew coffee. So, Mr. Kearns, talk a little bit about, you know, this is huge, not only because of the game tomorrow, but, you know, we're heading into our tricentennial as well as the big New Year's Look Eve out. celebration tonight. Tonight. Talk <laughs> about just, you know, the tourism aspect and what what a phenomenal crowd we have today. Oh, no. It, you know what? Right. I mean, and right. with, it is cold and everybody's out here and they have it. I mean, and, you know, you talk about these bands, the, 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 the level of bands. And, of course, you know, we're spoiled here in New Orleans. But imagine you're from out of town and to come and see this level of bands, to see the both university bands and then to get a taste of Mardi Gras for these folks is a real treat. Some people have never seen anything like this. And even though this is a, a small sample of what you can see during carnival season, still eye-opening, I imagine, for some Clemson and Alabama fans. Oh, yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll go back home, and they're going to tell everybody what a great time that they had in New Orleans. <laughs> and then they're going to come back and visit us, you know, when, even when they're not here for a bowl game, which is, is great. You know they've never had an opportunity where they see people throwing things off of floats for most of them. And they have time to really get a good experience here and plan to come back for this carnival season. Exactly. Well, exactly. I was telling Scott, you know, we did the parade tracker years ago, and it was my first time throwing things from our parade um, vehicle. It was the best time of my life. I mean, it was like nothing else. I, and I thought to myself, I missed out my whole life. Where have you been, Mardi Gras? You know, you see people throwing and you're like, oh, what's that all about? But when you're actually throwing things from your parade float or your vehicle, it's just an amazing, it's so so much fun. Well, it's interactive. And what it is, is, and that's what's the difference between the way that we celebrate and we do parades and everybody else is that it's interactive. You become part of the parade in New Orleans. There are no spectators. The spectators are part of the parade, the music, the bands, the floats, the throws, it all is, it, it creates a combination unmatched anywhere else in the world. Let's true. take a moment for the Fort Dodge High School All-American Marching Band. They're the Marching <laughs> Dodgers, Sulla. They have 85 members. Of band. course, Fort Dodge High School is in Fort Dodge, Iowa. And their band director is Al Paulson. Drum majors, Carissa Meyer, Landon Getting, Justin Vaughn, Marissa Smith. I uh, love their costume. I and mean, they're coming see. down from Iowa. They're used to their this. Their uniform. Yeah. They're used to this weather. <laughs> the Fort Dodge High School All-American Marching Band.
Okay. Right, marching band called the Oh, that was the Fort Dodge High School All-American Marching Band. They're called the Marching Dodgers with 85 members strong from Fort Dodge, Iowa with band director Al Paulson. They've been in uh, several bowl games, not including the Sugar Bowl. They've also played in the Outback Bowl, the Sun Bowl, the Alamo Bowl, and have done a very good job of all of that. Let's go back down to the streets and find Chief Meteorologist Margaret Orr. I hope she's not being offered moonshine by Alabama <laughs> fans like we were a few minutes ago, Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been offered money. Look at this. Woo! This is a Clemson $2 bill. And the whole idea is Clemson wants you to know they were here. And <laughs> we got lots of those. Go Tigers! I mean, everybody is so excited. So we just had a float go by. Lots of beads are flying, and I mean the. Th oh wait, look! What did you get? Beads. Lots of beads. Lots of beads. Lots. Of, and what Lots do you think? Beads. These are awesome, especially the ones that say Sugar Bowl on them. I know. I know. Oh, but the truth is, y'all don't have a whole lot of beads yet. We left a lot at home from last night. Okay. We have a lot for tonight. <laughs> okay. A lot, lot tonight. <laughs> okay. And uh, who, who do you think's really gonna win? Of course, Clemson. Okay. There's not a shadow of a doubt. Now wait, I've got to turn around. I've got to ask you about your coach's name. Dabo. 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 How did it get Dabo? I'm not really sure. No, I think from his little brother. That's his right. little brother his little named brother. him. Okay, so his little brother he couldn't, could... say, he couldn't say his name and he said Dabo and it stuck. So, that boy, that boy, that boy, that boy. So, Dabo is for that boy. That boy. That boy won the natty. Wait, say that again. That boy won the natty. Woo! Number one, that's right. And we beat Bama. I love that. I was going, Dabo, how did he get that name? And it's from that boy because his little brother okay so do y'all want to tell me about this two dollar bill that you're giving out hey this is this is a clemson tradition for as long as i i've been around granddaddy everybody that's how we show the towns, the cities, the money that we bring to these games, to these the towns and these communities. The team. Look at all of this. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Oh my we bring, gosh. We bring hundreds of dollars of $2 bills. Hundreds. To just to spend to show our spirit for something. I mean, just, just for Clemson. See, he's got them too. $2 Everybody bills. has a $2 bill, and I do too. I'm getting some coffee for you guys. See you later. Want to do this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Margaret, thanks. All right, we've got another phenomenal band rolling in Paul's Valley High School marching band. They're the pride of the valley from Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, with 78 members and band directors Drew Etheridge, drum major Tanner Gordon. They'll be playing patriotic salute for us here today. The Paul's Valley High School marching band from Paul's Valley, Oklahoma.
All right, that is the Pauls Valley High School marching band from Pauls Valley, Oklahoma. They performed at the Cotton Bowl, the Alamo Bowl, and the Sugar Bowl back in 2011. So here they are in 2017, back at the Sugar Bowl once again, Sella. And you just heard the patriotic salute, but uh, that was amazing. And I love, I love the little kiddos out here. I just saw a cute little kid eating ice cream in this cold lighting. That was my favorite one. That was my favorite scene of the day. We got Roman Harper joining us. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a little chilly, but uh, <laughs> only for New Orleans. But Everywhere else is stopped. cold, too. The rain stopped, and look, the sun is peeking out. Uh, kind of trying to a little bit. And only New Orleans knows how to have a parade. That's every, right. Every, at every opportunity they can. That's right. That sun was, like, symbolic for how great the day is going to be. It's an amazing day. Talk a little bit about what you think about this atmosphere today and um, you know about the game tomorrow well I, I mean I haven't been around uh, New Orleans for New Year's in a, in a little while so it's just exciting to actually not have to play football and actually enjoy all the festivities and you know get to have a drink on a Sunday yeah what is that you know what like because I mean? yeah, you're usually always playing you're yeah, getting ready yeah. for the game you're it, probably gearing up mentally right? right right so you stay focused you're not worried about all the the fun stuff now you know I actually get to enjoy these things and I, that's the the things that I enjoy the most is actually seeing all the people and all the smiles well let's talk about your rooting interest in this game <laughs> Clemson right <laughs> <laughs> only because I like Dabo Swinney and uh you no, know your, Dabo your allegiance Sweeney. lies with the Crimson Tide so uh how First of all, how hard was it last year for you to see them lose a national championship to this Clemson team? Well, it was hard at the time, but then you look back, you're like, I, I didn't expect the Alabama. I thought it was last year was going to be like a rebuilding type year because of our quarterback and all these other things. Then he comes out SEC player of the year and all these other things and accolades. And, and uh, we make it all the way to championship and actually lose it. Um, it was kind of heartbreaking, but at the same time, I never thought we'd be there. And, uh, you know, it was a great learning experience. And now we find ourselves right back in the same position as this year. Now, that being said, can Clemson get over on Nick Saban two years in a row? You know, I got to be honest, tough. it's so tough. And at the end of the day, I think Clemson's actually a more talented team uh, this year than Alabama uh, was is this year. So I, I think it's going to be a tough matchup for Alabama. We normally have not played well in, in the Dome as well on Sugar Bowls. But, uh, you know, you give Nick Saban a month to prepare for any team, and you got to like those odds. So I'm betting my I'm putting all my money on Nick more <laughs> than just like Alabama because I went there. It's more of like, all right, Nick, you got to pull this one out for us. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you what you think about both teams they both have great defense what do you mm -hmm. think about their offense and defense and you know yeah so I, I think the biggest matchup that I'm looking for is how does Alabama's offensive line match up with Clemson's great defensive line and uh, how do they rush Jalen uh, Hurts on third down uh, third down was a big Achilles heel for Alabama the one loss they had against Auburn I don't think they converted a third down all game and uh, so I think Clemson is going to kind of use some of those same type rushes and other things to try and see uh, make sure that Jalen Hurts beats him in the pocket and if he can do that and be able to step and contain and stay in the pocket and complete passes that gives Alabama a great chance to win this game if he does not he scrambles and runs and you know does other things that kind of throws off timing and rhythm then Alabama we're gonna have a little problem but uh, you know hopefully they're 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 better and they're, they're not as injured as they were early in the year and it's gonna all come down to those two things right there take us inside an Alabama helmet when the game kicks off tomorrow night what do you miss most about being out there <laughs> and what do these guys experience when they're on that big of a stage in a college football playoff like this? Uh, the biggest thing I miss about college is my teammates. Uh, you know, one of my teammates actually is a defensive line coach for Clemson, so I'll see him later on tonight, uh, Todd, ba Todd Bates. And, uh, but other than that, though, you know, I don't miss the college that much, but I know what they'll be going through. Uh, it'll be a lot of, you know, nervousness, oh, a lot of tension, things like that. Alabama and Clemson both guys have all been there, so it, it's not going to be a huge surprise. They've been in these, these places before. So um, at the end of the day, they're going to continue to do what they do. They're going to try and treat it like the next game. And, you know, after the first series, everybody will kind of settle in. Before you go, we have to ask you about the Saints. They've all had right. a great season. Yeah, it's still going. They'll, <laughs> they'll be fine. Uh, you know, they got Tampa. I think they'll win this game. Uh, they'll get the fourth seed, lock it up. If the Rams lose, they have the three seed. The Rams really don't care. I think they would rather play, uh, you know, the, the number two seed in Minnesota. Minnesota. I like the Saints matchup versus the Eagles better than Minnesota regardless. So uh, they're going to have to win a game at home. Yeah, I'm telling you. Uh, they're going to have to win a game at home, which I feel like they can do. Carolina's a tough matchup. 
personally, they don't they don't fare well against the Saints at home, so they like that matchup. And against Seattle or Atlanta, I think as long as the Saints are at home for round one, they'll they'll win that game. And then they got to go on the road. I think they they rather play Philly than Minnesota in the dome. Uh, but you know the Saints have played great. They've been better than everybody thought defensively and offensively. Uh, you can't give the ball enough to Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara. That's the biggest thing. And Mike Thomas is is making plays left and right. Tons of analysis. <laughs> that was great. That NFL. was great. Perfect. <laughs> Roman Harper, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Oh, man, thank you, man. Just, I just know I love football. I've always done it. And roll tide, man. It's have always a, been great. Yeah, and have a good time. I oh, mean, I like will. you I, said. As soon as I get out of here, I'm going to have a couple yeah. drinks. I'm enjoying myself. Go enjoy. I'm going to be like a real New Orleans. You, you know? deserve and it. I only had one person recognize me. I was walking out here. My gray hair always gives me away. I don't so. know. There's a line. There's a line of fans wanting a picture with you. So oh, I don't no, know about that. I'll, I'll take them all. That's all right. Much more from the third annual All-State Sugar Bowl New Year's Eve parade after a quick break. Don't go far. You're watching WDSU's presentation of the All-State Sugar Bowl New Year's Eve parade. Brought to you by French Market Cold Brew, New Orleans' own Soul Field Coffee Concentrate, the New Orleans Convention Center, Louisiana's economic engine, Dos Equis, who encourages you to respect the game.